Welcome back. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a how I edit, how I film, how I make these videos. Honestly, I was meant to do this video like, like maybe three months ago, but it's fine. Um, we've made it here. We're doing it now. Life got in the way, okay? Okay. Okay. If you're new to my channel, I'm Law. Hi, and you can subscribe if you'd like to. Um, I have many, many a video coming soon. So firstly, I want to talk about how I actually plan my videos and organize my time. So I am a full-time student, so obviously that takes up a lot of my time. But I plan all of my videos on the Notes app on my phone. Now, I find a lot of my inspiration in my surroundings, so I kind of can get inspiration for videos anywhere and everywhere. This is why I use my phone, because I've pretty much always got my phone on me. I have a separate folder within my notes app called videos that I literally just add random notes to as and when and then when I'm trying to think of a video idea I just go into that folder and see like what kind of ideas I came up with that week. Sometimes I will properly plan my videos so for example my podcast video I plan that more than I do usually purely because there were certain points I wanted to say so it obviously depends on the video how like heavily like scripted it is. Okay so now moving on to my equipment. Now this is literally one of the things that I get the most questions on um, however before I do talk about this I just want to do a little like disclaimer. Um, I am a media student hence why I have quite expensive equipment in some places. I use it for my work and therefore I have invested my money in. I didn't buy a lot of this equipment for YouTube necessarily but more so to do with my course. So in terms of my actual camera that I film with, um, the majority of the time I use my Canon G7X which I'm filming on right now. I would say before you go out and just buy what other people have, definitely do your research into what you actually want from a camera. So for example the G7X it doesn't have interchangeable lenses whereas if you wanted that it might be better to look at a Sony camera or a different type of Canon camera. Another camera that I occasionally will use is the Canon 70D. Now this is like my main media camera. This is what I film myself on for college. I definitely recommend this camera. However, if you are more into vlogging, um, then I would say definitely get a lighter camera because this, this thing is very heavy. In terms of lighting, I usually just vlog. So I don't really use like an external light. Um, however, I have bought a light. I do have a softbox. It is the newer, I'll put it on the screen. Honestly, would really, really recommend them. Um, I know they also have a ring light, which a lot of people use. My main light that I use is a GVM light. Now, I will link this down below, um, but it is just an LED light. You can also change how bright it is, how warm toned it is, or cool toned, if you prefer that look. Now, in terms of tripods, um, I have a couple. So, my main tripod is an Amazon Basics tripod. It was literally like £12 or something. Um, it's honestly brilliant. I could rave about it all day. It's lasted maybe like three, four years. If you want a more hard wearing tripod, then like go for it. But um, the Amazon Basics one is really good. So I would recommend that. So this one is a Manfrotto tripod. I really like this brand for tripods purely because it's so sturdy and you, you can just rely on it to look after your camera. Now in terms of audio, the Canon G7X Mark II has very good audio. Um, so I don't really need to have an external audio device. An actual mic that I do have um, that I will use for voiceovers is the Samson CO1U Pro Professional USB Studio Condenser Microphone. Um, this is honestly the best mic I've ever tried in my life. I use this for podcast type videos as well, um, which there are more to come. So please stay tuned. So in terms of editing, I use my MacBook Pro 15 inch, which is the 2015 one, I believe. On my laptop, I edit on Final Cut Pro. There are a lot of people who do use Premiere, but the majority of people do use Final Cut Pro. If you're in education, you can get a discount on Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro on its own is £300. Now, if you get an education package, um, you get Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, Motion, um, I feel like something else, I'm not sure, um, for £200, which is so much better because you get so much more. Now also with my editing, I like to add overlays like this. So for that, I use my iPad. Now I recently bought this. Um, this has not been like a thing that's been on my channel for ages. It's literally just been my previous video and that's about it. But I do use my iPad and I use Procreate, which I think is about £10. Don't quote me, but I feel like it's about £10. Again, this was not bought solely for YouTube. 
mainly for my course. Before I had any of that, or just any really of my equipment, I used my phone and there's an app called Adobe Draw. It's a little less practical, I'm not gonna lie. Um, however, it is like, it works, it's really good. So now going into how I film, um, I film on my Canon G7X. Now I've written down the settings that I use. So I use 1920 by 180p. Most people watch videos in 1080p or 720p. So I would just say that's like the general standard, um, just HD, I guess. I also film in, I believe it's 59, frames per second. I also film in PAL because it's like the European... I googled it, it told me to do it, so I did. In terms of white balance, I use custom white balance. I usually bring the dot between the green and the pink, um, purely because those are the tones that I prefer in my videos. In terms of variation of clips within my videos, I am no stranger to a good old montage. Um, now, I always, if I'm filming a montage, I will do close-up clips, long shot clips, mid shot. Realistically, it's not interesting if everything's just one type of shot. Hence why throughout this video, I'll be having overlays, pop-ups, kind of different things. Now we move on to the big one. So. Number four, how I edit. As I said earlier, I do use Final Cut Pro. However, what I'm saying can be like transferred into different editing softwares. I'm just gonna go through my process. Um, so the first thing I do is I import my clips directly into Final Cut Pro. Um, now, one thing that I will say is please make sure that your like project settings are the same as your camera settings. If you film in 1920, 180p, please make sure that your project size is that and same with the frames per second, things like that. It's just, it it makes it so much easier if you do that. So, would highly recommend. Then usually what I do is I will review my clips. If it's something that I filmed literally the day before, then I don't need to do this step. Um, but if it's something that I filmed like a few days before or a week ago, um, I'd like to review my clips so that I am fully aware of what I'm editing, when I'm gonna edit a montage or kind of, just to get a rough idea of what I'm doing so that it kind of makes the process flow a bit faster. I then add a colour solid. Now, not many people do this, which kind of honestly baffles me because it just makes it so much easier. I add a colour solid into the project just as it is um, and I usually extend it to like roughly the time that I would want my video to be. So then I will add the clips over the top of this colour solid. Having a colour solid allows me to import clips and cut them and it not all just like bounce back together. However, one setting that I would recommend having on when you are doing this is the little like buttons and they kind of magnetise. I'll put it on screen. Um, but basically, this means that when you put a clip next to another one, it kind of magnetizes to it, which means you don't have awkward spaces where there's no footage. Once I've done a rough cut, I have a more like solid idea of what I want the vibe of the video to be, what I want the color scheme to be, the like kind of text. Like I just, I, I get a good vibe, you know? Um, and so then I'm able to move on to the more intricate editing things. A lot of people add basic text, which is, a good text to add, don't get me wrong. Um, however, I always use custom text. I can add how it, if it fades in, if it twists in. The fonts that I use, I get from defont.com or I will draw them myself on my iPad. On the screen right now, you'll see some of my favorites. Um, I'll just type their names in. Um, so basically I use these different fonts for like different vibes. So if I want more of like an aesthetic, like but professional vibe, I'll go for fonts like this. And if I want more of like a like montage, like yay vibe, then I'll go for more fonts like this. Now also with text, I like to add different effects to it. So one thing that I really like doing is the tracking feature. I think this is, it just makes text so much better. So for example, this is a font without tracking and this is it with tracking. Um, you can kind of see the difference. It kind of makes it a little bit more aesthetic not gonna lie and obviously you can have like the font it can be outlined it can add a shadow underwater effect which makes it do this um and also a glitch effect which i've made like a preset get bad tv effect in terms of the actual effects on the videos i do do like effects sometimes on my videos it depends on the type of video and again like the kind of style i want for the video um but i sometimes use the fisheye effect which is this one Hi. I sometimes will use the glitch effect to go between clips, so like this. And then also sometimes I will change the audio. So I then go to 
um, the audio settings and so I usually add the pitch effect and then just decrease it or increase it as I like. Um, I then also use like the zoom, crop, chem burns, whatever you want to use. I usually do this via keyframes, however you can just use chem burns if you want to. For the more animated titles, um, I do use my iPad for this. I use the app Procreate and I will overlay clips of me doing all of these things as I'm speaking. So I'll screenshot the frame of the video that I I want this animation to be on. Hi, Editing Law here. So I forgot to say it, but I will then airdrop the screenshot to my iPad. I would go over to Procreate and I would draw over the title that I want to look animated. I draw it three times. For me, I just feel like three is a better number when I do animations. So I then will like draw on three separate layers. Um, may I just add quickly? Um, three different versions of the text. If you just trace over it, like every single frame is gonna look slightly different, which is what gives it the animated effect. And then once I've drawn them, I click this save as PNG button. Uh Hello, so since filming this video, I have realized that you can export them as an animated GIF, which is so convenient. And then we'll add them from my iPad to my laptop and then import them into Final Cut Pro. Now from here, I will decide how long I want the frames to be. Now because I film in such a high frames per second, usually it will be between six to eight frames that I leave each one up for. However, if you're filming in 23, 24, then it'll probably be like one to three frames um, you want to keep them up for. I then highlight all of the clips, right click and make them a custom clip and then I just duplicate the custom clips um, to however long I want it to be. On to shortcuts. So you can customise these um, to be any key. For me I've selected B as cut, C as copy, V as paste um, purely because those are generally the things that I use in a day to day thing so it kind of just works. Then these brackets that are on the screen right now, I don't know how to describe them. Um, you can set these as at the start and end of a clip if you want to. The main one that I use is the R key. Now I've set this up to be range. I think it's already set up as range, but the R key I press when I'm going through music, which I'll talk about in a second because that is a common struggle for all YouTubers. Usually I will bring the volume of the background music down a lot when I speak. So having a range selector just makes it so much smoother. Color correction slash what filter I use. Um, now I have created my own preset on Final Cut Pro. Um, so I just like drag it onto the clips when I want to. I use an adjustment layer. So I will link a video down below where you can find the adjustment layer. I can't remember whose video it was. I'm really sorry. It's like invisible basically until you add something to it. That's the best way to put it, I think. I like to color correct more towards the oranges and also green sometimes. I feel like they just suit the aesthetic and vibe of my channel. So those are the ones that I kind of go towards. Some people's videos are very like warm toned. Some people's are very cool toned. I'm gonna to show you what a big difference color grading makes. So for example, this is me without color grading. Um, I feel very exposed over here. And this is me with color grading. So it really does make such a big difference to my video. So at the beginning of this video, I will have had an artsy intro. I usually do that right at the end after I've edited everything. I go through, I find my favorite clips, I copy and paste them, um, put them at the beginning and then edit them together to a song. Now, speaking of a good old song, um, YouTube and the music copyrights. This is a section of the video where I talk about music. Now this is something that I wanted to talk about for so long. The amount of videos I watch with this background audio is just insane. And honestly it hurts my heart. Me being a media student, I'm like, please find different background music. To find non-copyright music on YouTube, there is the audio library channel. epidemic sound which I really really would recommend like it's it was amazing service for when I used it um, it is £10 a month um, obviously it depends upon your view count basically it's paying for the license monthly um, but some of the music on there is brilliant and so so great however so recently I found thematic which honestly I cannot recommend enough 
free and on copyright music. You don't have a subscription to pay. Um, you literally just use the music in your videos and link it in the description box. As you will see in the description box of this video, you will see like a list of all the music that I've used. That's all you have to do and it's brilliant because it spreads awareness of different artists and it just saves a bit of money and obviously because I'm a student I kind of need to save money. The next thing I want to talk about is thumbnails. Now I feel like a lot of people ask about thumbnails and I just kind of, I'm just like, I just kind of make them however I make them. But for my thumbnails I use my iPad, I use Procreate. Another app that I would recommend is Fonto, um, honestly brilliant, I used it for so so long before I used Procreate. Um, also Photoshop is amazing. Usually what I do is I screenshot the photo or if I've got the photo taken um, I will just airdrop it to my iPad, um, import it into Procreate, draw whatever I want to draw on it, sample colours from the background kind of thing and then usually once I finish my thumbnail I will airdrop it to my phone, I will import it into Visco, VSCO, whatever your preference is um, and I will add usually like one of the C's they're my favourites at the moment. Another thing that I find with thumbnails is a lot of people kind of think of thumbnails as less important than the actual video. Now, obviously the video and the content is very, very important, like it's the main thing you're making. However, nobody's gonna click on it if you don't have a good thumbnail. Basically, it just needs to be appealing to an audience because that, like, that's their first impression of you before they've even seen the video. Now we make it to the final part of the video where I want to do a little message to all the YouTubers out there because I feel like a lot of the time people watch these videos and want to do exactly what other people are doing. For the first, like, year, maybe nearly two years, I'm not gonna lie, um, on YouTube, I've kind of been focused on, like, oh, like, that person's doing that, which means I should probably do that too. Um, which... <laughs> Let's just say is the wrong way to go about it. You don't want to copy somebody's video, especially without giving credit. I think it's very easy to measure success on the number of views, the number of comments. Um, so I look back and I can see the like progression that I've made through the production of my videos, how I'm now so confident talking to a camera. Um, and that is the real success, I think. Not everybody's gonna love everything you do, and that is the way YouTube is. Somebody is always gonna have something to pick on. Somebody's always gonna have something to say. Please don't feel limited to what you can create because there is literally no limit. And that's all I'm gonna say because this video has been really, really long. I hope that this video has been helpful for other YouTubers or other people looking to start YouTube, or just anyone, you know? If, if you found this helpful, if you just sat there with your cup of tea listening, um, thanks. <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned for more content because there are so many videos that I've planned for the next couple of weeks. I'll see you probably next week, maybe the week after, I don't know. Subscribe. <laughs> see you in a bit, bye.